And, you know, the WWE game, I play when I can, but I just keep getting beat. I use my character all the time and I can't win to save my life. Well, it's yeah. awesome to meet you. I'm so excited to talk to you about your inclusion in the game. I'm curious a little bit about how your inclusion first came about. Like, what was the process like integrating you into the game? Did you have a lot of say over your appearance and your moves or stuff like that? <laughs> Listen, I got a phone call saying, hey, we're going to put you in a new video game. What do you think? I go, <laughs> hey, right? They go, of course. Then hell yeah, I got nothing to say so. I'm good. <laughs> no. <laughs> But, I mean, they've always been, WWE um, and the makers of the video games have always been good to myself and Bubba. So we never really had to put any influence um, on anything that was done in terms of that. Um, they've always hit our signature moves, even down to our walk, walking to the ring, me getting up on the top rope you know, clapping my hands and coming up with the 3D sign. They've always been good. I just saw a glimpse of that. And I remember when my character went up to the top rope, I go, is it going to do it? Is it going to do it? And the <laughs> minute yeah, and he crossed his hands and did that, I was like, wow, to a T. I mean, it really, they really did a fantastic job with this video game. I'm very excited about it. I really am. The UCW uh, Punk Pack uh, coming out next Wednesday, May 15th, featuring myself, Bubba Ray Dudley, CM Punk, Sandman, Terry Funk, Paul Heyman's manager card. So I'm really excited about it. Nice. And you have a long history of really extreme matches with like tables and ladders and a lot of chaotic stuff that seems like it could be hard to translate into a game. What do you feel is the key to capturing that? Uh, history that you have in matches to recreate it in a game accurately for players? I think video games um, and no, I should say uh, like YouTube, stuff like that. Videos that you can go back and watch over and over again which it's like, like so many things that you've watched over and over again. Once it's embedded in your head you actually know it without watching it. Uh, speaking to the participants that participated in the matches uh, definitely is a plus. Uh, getting their thoughts and ideas on how things should have been or should be uh, with certain matches that you've done. Because there might be things that you might have seen but didn't know um, how we did it or what we did to get into it. So you have a better understanding on how that works. Um, you know, so to me, you know, again, like I said earlier, I think they've done a great job uh, in recreating history uh, with the Dudleys and Terry Funk and CM Punk in the video game, of course, with um, Sandman and Paul Heyman. Um, it's just a matter of going out there and now letting the fans enjoy what we're what they're seeing and playing. And, uh, you know, that's more stuff they could talk about. Listen, it, it with, with the ECW uh, Punk Pack coming out on May 15th, it's great because it gives a new resurgent shot back into the arm of ECW. You know, thank God for WrestleMania doing it in Philadelphia. Now we got this large group of fans that probably did not know the new generation that did not know about ECW now are familiar and going, hey, wait a minute, what? ECW, oh my God, this was extreme. You know, oh my God, where are these guys now? <laughs> well, we're right here, we're a little older, but <laughs> we're right here. And just in terms of uh, recent wrestling events, I'm really curious, now that the Roman Reigns bloodline storyline has sort of entered a new chapter, one where he isn't the champion, where do you rank his reign among some of the other great lengthy reigns? Um, I rank him in the same rank as the Stone Cold Steve Austin, as The Rock, um, as a Bret the Hitman Hart, Hulk Hogan, you know, Bruno San Martino. He carried the company when others couldn't. And he did it for a long period of time. Listen, at one particular point in time, there was it was back in the 80s. You had people like Hogan, Bruno, uh, Flair. They would have the titles for almost three, four, five years. And then that type of thing went away. You didn't have that. So you were a champion maybe six months and that was it. But Roman was able to captivate that and make it just like we did back in the day where we were counting how many days 
would Roman still be champion? Who would be tough enough to knock him off that pedestal? And we had to make sure that the right person came along and was able to do that. Um, you know, we saw matches with him and other uh, WWE superstars that, you know, were legendary, but yet we needed that one guy and that one guy was Cody Rose. So I was very happy to see that. So again, I think Roman carrying the company the way he did, especially during the roughest times uh, during the pandemic and leading up to WrestleMania 40, I think it's great. Storyline-wise, the things that he did with the bloodline, tremendous you know tremendous i can't put over enough how proud i am of the usos and him and sokoa it's, it was a great ride and even sammy Zayn when he was part of that so you know it was a great ride it was a great watch uh to see those guys do their magic and very proud of every one of those participants that participated in that and last year also marked a reunion of team 3d what was it like getting back in the ring, uh, getting back in the ring with Bully Ray? Well, it was rough. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it was rough. I had been out of the ring for seven years. You know, I had back surgery, um, and I was about two and a half years, about two, two, two years, and maybe two months off of that. I did the rehab, the proper rehab, and all of that to get my back strong and ready. Uh, but you know, you just don't realize how tough it is to try to get your body back into ring shape. And it was hard, it was very, very hard, but I was able to do it and make it, you know, feel and look great. So I was very happy to be back with Bubba in that aspect. They brought back great memories. Um, do I want to really do it again like that? Huh? Ooh. <laughs> I say no and I don't want to say yes, but damn. Oh, that was rough. <laughs> that was rough. But I had a great time though. And I know you keep very busy, but do you ever play video games in your downtime? You know, I'm a sports guy in terms of NBA 2K, okay. uh, uh, the soccer game that they have out there, um, Major League Baseball, Madden Football. I'm a, I'm a guy like that. I love that. The fighting games, the shooting games, not too much. Don't really know how to play those games, but the sports games, absolutely. And, you know, the WWE game, I play when I can, but I just keep getting beat. I use my character all the time and I can't win to save my life. <laughs> I've been in video games with myself since 1999 and my win-loss record is not a good one. <laughs> I probably Bobby Yuka of professional wrestling video gamers, if you guys know who Bobby Yuka was. He was a guy in, in baseball that always struck out and never, never did anything. He was in WrestleMania three and WrestleMania four. Uh, you know, Jesse Ventura, uh, the Hall of Famer, used to always make fun of him in the commentating when he was at the shows because he never, never hit a home run, never did anything. Well, that's me and video. <laughs> yeah, I can see like if you have done wrestling for so long, playing the game itself might sort of not even feel like escapism because it's just like, well, <laughs> this was my job for so many exactly. years anyway. <laughs> the only different video game in real life is that in real life, I won a lot more matches than I ever did playing a video game. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. I know our time is about up, but it was so awesome to get to meet you and learn you. more about both your career and this game. So thank you so much.